Marcus Dixon, NFL player, uh, Tennessee Titans. Marcus, um, just signed uh, with Tennessee Titans. You've played with several NFL teams. Um, first off, being a kid from Rome, Georgia, what was it like to make the league? I mean, it's awesome. I mean, being here today, you know, seeing around, being in Rome, and I see the little kids running around playing. I was like, man, that was that was me running around in these streets, running around playing football and basketball, and it's just amazing to make it to the league. It's a blessing, first of all, because um, it doesn't happen a lot. Not everybody makes it. But to be that small town guy from Rome, Georgia, played in the NFL five years, and it's still an opportunity to do it now. It's just, it's like it's overwhelming. Tremendous blessing. What was it like that first time you walked to the locker room? Man, I was, uh, I don't know. I was overwhelmed. It felt crazy. You know, these are guys I've seen on TV that I've watched that, uh, you know, I've supported. You know, like I had a, the Marcus were walking to the locker room, and that's like one of my favorite players. And, uh, he calls my name out, like, hey, Marcus, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I was smiling ear to ear, but you got to play cool because you don't want to be looking like a softie because it is an NFL locker room. But I was I was amazed to see all these guys, Jason Witten, Tony Romo, uh, Leonard Davis, Flozo Adams, like all these guys. Been beast on the NFL field. I'm in the same locker room with them, so it was, it was amazing. What are some things about the NFL and the, and the locker room that, that folks may not realize that players go through? We are some clowns. <laughs> we would play hard on Sunday, but when we get in the locker room, that's like our sanctuary. That's our like, that's our living room. You know, everybody. That's our man cave. You know, we're in there and we just some clowns. We have fun, cause you got to. You know, football is is so serious. And then once you get on the NFL level, you know you, you know you mess with people's livelihood. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a business. But when you get in that locker room, like we we just clown. We just we laugh and we picking on each other. We we're wrestling and we just. We're just enjoying the environment because it's that camaraderie. You know what I'm saying? We come together as one. And it's just, it's, we some clowns in that locker room. What's the mindset on the fans for the players? Uh, on the mindset on the fans, uh, I mean, first of all, I love the fans. love everything they do. But uh, as far as with the fans, man, I, I really do. They support us at the same time. But I don't think they really realize what it takes to be an NFL player because, you, you know what I'm saying, I understand it's your team. But, you know, I'm cuss us out if we, we make a bad play. Yeah, I mean, we know we messed up. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but a lot of fans, hands down, they, they always are behind us. We went in, you know, they're going to talk crap to the other team. I love all that. Uh, I remember when I was in New York, you know, that's probably one of the, the brutal fans, the brutal, most brutal fans in the league, in the New York Jets. But when they got they got you back. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the fans are awesome. Yeah, we, we, we wouldn't be able to do it without them. You brought up the Jets. I want to ask a question. The, the little tripping incident that you were standing beside uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Do you remember that? Man, we were standing there. What it is, we try to stand there and just, you know, kind of have a wall. Just kind of if somebody's running in. But as far as the sticking the knee out, we had no clue that was about to happen. So it was uh, it was kind of crazy. Were you uh, kind of like, um? Like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, what in the world just happened? And, you know, we seen the tape and we actually saw it. And I was like, wow. But uh, I'm glad, you know, Buddy wasn't hurt. Because that, that definitely was bad, but uh, it wasn't, you know, in, intentionally on our part that for that to happen. So when you're trying to sign on with a team, what do you go through? What is an average day like? How, how hard is it? I mean, it's tough because you got a like fans of me situation. I got cut by the Jets in 2012, so uh, in September, and so I had to go through the whole season, and you just got to constantly work out. So in your mindset, you kind of got to tell yourself like, all right, I'm working out to stay ready. But to make yourself have something to work towards, I'm working out just to stay healthy so I can live long. Because you never know when opportunities are going to come. And for my opportunity, it didn't come again until February when I signed with the Chiefs. So I went through the whole offseason and I got cut again. Um, final day of cuts. So you just, every day your mind says like, man, am I ever going to get an opportunity to play? And, you know, deep down you want to give up sometimes. But it's like, I can't. Like, I know I got more in the tank. So you, you constantly keep working out, working out. You know, you constantly, just me speaking on myself, you constantly praying, you trying to stay in shape, you know, you're trying to like just, just stay on top of things. And, you know, eventually I got the, I got a phone call the, the last day of 2013 saying that the Titans want to sign into a contract. So uh, you just you can't give up. Basically. You just, every day you just got to keep grinding. You just got to put your head down and keep going. Just just keep going. You're an NFL football player, um, something that, that many majority, 80, 90 percent of the people that play football never get a chance to do. Um, you had some issues in Rome You decide, before college, but you decided to come back to Rome. Why? 
Uh, the main reason I come back to Rome is for family. Uh, all my family's here, and and in Rome, I do. I love Rome. Anything that you know, of course, everything happened in the past, but I'm not gonna hold that against them. You know, what I'm saying like I've always said this. My girlfriend said, you know, you hold grudges. You know, all you're doing is holding your life back, and that's not me. I'm not gonna be that. You know, I'm sitting around here in Rome. It's probably people might look at me sideways and whatnot, but I don't care. I don't. I'm, I'm not here for you. You know, it's the biggest purpose for me. I'm here for these little kids to show, like, look. Yes, you're in this situation here in Rome. Things might not look good, but there's a way out. You can get up out of Rome. You don't have to be stuck here. You know what I'm saying? And, and I come here, like I said, for my family, and I come here hoping that if any little kid, they want to talk to me about football, like, I'm here. Come talk to me. Like, there's a way out. Like, don't. Like, physically, you're stuck here. You know what I'm saying? You're here for the time being. But mentally, you can be elsewhere. Mentally, you can be, you know, waking up dreaming, like, oh, man, I'm... You know, if you want your favorite quarterback is Cam Newton. I'm Cam Newton today. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to challenge yourself like that. And that's what I want them to see. Like, you, you can make it out of Rome, Georgia. What is it about Rome that you love? Um, like I said, my, my family's here. And this is all I really, I grew up here. And I had some great memories. Of course, I had a, there's a little dark past in there too, when in high school. But with Rome, and I, I like the community. Um, I think people... People are kind of close, uh, close as they can be. Um, Rome is kind of stuck in their own ways a little bit, but it's, it's Rome, Georgia. But I think it's, it's definitely one of those places where if you want to retire and you just want to relax and chill, it's a place you come do that because it's, it's, a, it's, a it's a good town to just relax. But uh, if you want to come here and start something new, you don't, don't bring it to Rome, Georgia. So, uh, but I love Rome, man, and I, I always will. And will I live here? Probably not, but at the same time, I always will come back to Rome because this, this is my hometown. Rome is where my heart's at. You're getting close to 30 years old. Uh, yeah. A lot of times passed uh, since growing up. What? How has Marcus Dixon changed the most that people may not know? Uh, I'm not going to fall for a lot of bull crap. Uh, that's what friends, uh, family, anybody. Like, you're not coming with any just some bull crap. You know, I always felt... I always been naive to a lot of situations, and um, and there's no nobody to blame but myself. But I had to grow up a lot. And one thing I said about the kids, there is another, there is another way out. You can go elsewhere. You don't have to just be stuck here in Rome, Georgia. Like, and it's not saying it's the bad place to be stuck at, but if you want to go do something, you can. You just have to make it. Like, just you just have to have in your mindset every day that I'm gonna get up out of here. I'm gonna go to college. I'm going to go do this. If I want to be this engineer, I'm going to be an engineer. If I want to be an NFL player, I'm going to work to be that NFL player. Whatever you want to be, you can do it. You know what I mean? So don't, like, you don't have to be just stuck and, and, and like, everything you see is negative. Like You don't have to be around it. Channel it and turn it into a positive. Let it motivate you to get up out of Rome, Georgia. So with me, like that's what I learned. And yeah, I'm here now for the time being, but I'm not going to be here for long. But you know what I'm saying? Like, but... I don't know, like, I've just grown mentally, like, emotionally, just everything. Like, I'm about to be, like I said, I'm about to be 30 years old. At some point, it's got to be a change. So, like, it's just, I don't fall for a lot of the bull crap. You know, if you're coming to me and I feel like you're sincere about something, I'm going to help you. But if you come to me and I feel like you're just coming just to put your hand out of something, then you might as well go somewhere else. And that's just keeping it real. I do anything I can for anybody, but, you know, at the same time, like, I want to see you, you know, help yourself as well. If you're helping yourself, I'll help you too. But if you're coming to me just looking for a handout, you know, it's not going to happen. I mean, you've donated a lot of your time to a sports store in town. Oh, yeah. I love it here at Players. Uh, great sports store. You know, get all your memorabilia. Come high let us. But uh, I love it here, man, because I, I definitely want to own my own store one day. So I've learned a lot from um, Brian Allen and, and Scott Hunter. They've showown me a lot with, this, with the store, the business itself. And, I mean, it's a great sports store. I mean, who doesn't want to come in here and, and talk sports all day? Like, I know, like, the back of my hand. And it's just, you know, somebody might come in here and might have an Auburn shirt on or anything. I'm going to talk crap. I'm a, I'm a Bulldogs fan. You know, but they come in, I'm like, go dogs. You know what I'm saying? But that's sports. You can have fun in sports. Sports is meant to have fun. Yeah, it's, it's a serious business or whatnot, but it's, it's still, like, it's fun. And, you know, coaches always tell you it's a kid's game. You know, still be like that little kid when you're playing football. Like, it's still a kid's game. So it's just, you know, I love being here at this store. Finally, we were recording this um, mid-January. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? I'm going to pick the Seahawks. I love that defense. Like, they, <laughs> them boys is rolling up front. You know, I'm all about D-line. 
them boys are like they're getting the job done. And yeah. I like Russell Wilson. Of course, I like Marshawn Lynch. They got the weapons. Then with Percy Harvey coming back, so uh, my pick is definitely the Seahawks. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna be the final four college football teams in the first playoffs next year? Ooh, Putting boy. you on the spot. Got to put the Bulldogs. We're gonna be there. Uh, man, Florida State. Them, them guys. I like. I like Winston. Uh, he, he's definitely. Uh, he's a, he's an awesome quarterback. Uh, I don't know who the other two would be, man. I like what Auburn's doing. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna say Georgia, Auburn, uh, Florida State, and I'm gonna put Texas in there. 